Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Tuesday, April 8, 2014. This is Texan TV News from Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas, and I am Autumn Adams. In today's headlines, applications open for TAT Executive Council, Stephenville Museum hosts annual plant fair, Yukon becomes national champions, updates on the shooting at Fort Hood, and India begins voting in the world's biggest election. Now today's top story. Tarleton Alternative Transportation Executive Council applications for the 2014-2015 year are now open. TAP President Jay Johnson says students can apply on OrgSync under the Feed tab. The application is open to all students and is due by 5.30 p.m. today. If you have any questions, please email jjohnson at jjohnson at go.tarleton.edu. We now go to video for more on TAP. Are you familiar with the TAP program? Yes, I am. Do you think it makes a positive impact on our student body? Yeah, it, pr it promotes safe driving and being able to be safe when you're drinking. And having okay. Effect. Do you think the TAP program helps students make the right decision when it comes to transportation after being under the influence? Yes, I agree. I think it's a positive. According to Jay Johnson, TAT is a great way to give back to the school and keep fellow students safe. As TAT has transitioned to a member-based organization, it is an ideal time to apply for executive council and give your input on the future of the organization. In local news, the Stephenville Empire Tribune reports that the Stephenville Museum is toasting its annual Native and Heirloom Plant Fair this Saturday. The event is open to the public and will take place from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Stephenville Museum. The fair began in 1993 by museum directors Dan Young and Larry Mayfield and has continued to bring in a large audience, especially during the, drought, the extended drought Texas is suffering and municipal water restrictions. Booths benefiting amateur and professional gardeners will be set up throughout the museum and concession, concessions will also be available. Stephenville Master Gardeners, Stephenville Organic Gardening Club, and the Prairie Rose Chapter of the Native Plant Society of Texas will also be in attendance for those seeking more information regarding native plants and gardening. And now for today's sports, Texas, national, and international news from the Associated Press. The University of Connecticut Huskies became the 2014 NCAA Division I national champions last night after defeating the 8th seed Kentucky. This is the highest seed total to play in the national title game since the national tournament began seeding in 1979. This is Connecticut's, Connecticut's second NCAA title in four years. This is UConn's fourth overall national title. We now go to the Associated Press with video. They're cheering in Connecticut after UConn wins the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. It was a win that almost no one saw coming as UConn topped Kentucky 60-54. to UConn got off to a quick start and never fell behind. The win comes after UConn was banned from March Madness for a year because of grade problems. Coach Kevin Ollie said the Huskies came back ready to fight. Well, I keep telling you it started 18 months ago um, when, they, when they kept believing and they stayed loyal to the program. And, you know, it's just a wonderful feeling to, to hold that trophy up. Shabazz Napier led the way with 22 points, six rebounds, and three assists, and was named most outstanding player of the Final Four. Napier spoke about the one-year ban and said it gave this year's team a sense of purpose. We hungry, and uh, <laughs> when you when you stop, you know, when you when you pre prevent us from trying to go to the postseason, you know, and, and it wasn't our fault. Uh, we worked since that, since that day on. Free throws made a big difference in the game. Connecticut was 10 for 10. Kentucky shot 13 for 24. Diane Kepley, The Associated Press. Spring is upon us, and with it, weeds are springing up all over the state. The name weed has usually been associated with plants that are just not wanted. From the agronomic standpoint, a weed is described as a plant that can cause economic loss in a production unit. Weed foragers will point out that what most consider undesirable are, in fact, as edible as the plants in your vegetable garden. Weeds are present in pastures, fields, and yards and tell us that over time, our management tied with drought 
and management decisions often lead to an environment which can build up a weed population. Over time, humans have disrupted the natural, natural system by plowing, raking, and livestock grazing or other method, methods. From our activities, weeds appear on the landscape, the garden, and the fields. Most problematic weeds can withstand long periods of drought and grow where little soil exists. Weeds also produce an abundance of seeds for continuing the future of the, the species. It turns out that no single plant in Texas has the name weed, but the term is used to classify what the eye of the beholder perceives. On any day and under any condition, any of the 5,000 species of plants known to occur in Texas can be classified as a weed. The name of a weed is important because all knowledge known about a particular weed, its value in management, is tied to the plant's name. By knowing the plant's name, we can determine the management strategy to control this plant and the landscape. In Texas and national news, the latest on the shooting at Fort Hood. Army investigators have released a more detailed timeline of the shootings. Ivan Lopez killed three people and wounded 16 people before turning the gun on himself. At a news conference on Monday, Army spokesmen say that the shooting occurred after an argument that was related to Lopez's request for taking leave. We now go to the Associated Press with video. At this point in the investigation, we can confirm that the alleged shooter, Specialist Ivan Lopez, was involved in a verbal altercation concerning his request for leave and the processing of that request at his unit's administrative office. Within minutes of the altercation, the subject brandished a 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun and fired multiple rounds, killing one soldier and wounding 10 additional soldiers. <clears throat> the deceased soldier and at least one of the wounded soldiers had been involved in a verbal altercation with the subject prior to the shooting. The subject then exited the administration building through a door on the south side. He got into his privately owned vehicle that was also parked on the south side of the building. This entire scenario described lasted approximately eight minutes from when the first 911 calls were received until the shooter allegedly took his life and we received calls that the shooter was down. At this point in the ongoing investigation, we have collected more than 235 pieces of evidence. We believe the subject fired more than 35 rounds of 45 caliber ball ammunition. We have only one alleged subject connected to these shootings and he is deceased. We have found no evidence that these crimes were connected to a terrorist or extremist organization. But again, we have not completely ruled that out in order to conduct a thorough and complete felony investigation. We have not confirmed a definitive motive, but are doing everything possible to do so. A member of Lopez's family claims that Lopez was upset he was only granted 24 hours leave to attend his, mother, his mother's funeral in April, but later that leave was extended to two days. Lopez was undergoing treatment for depression and anxiety from a brain injury he received while serving in Iraq. President Obama is scheduled to be at a present to be present at a memorial service on Wednesday at Fort Hood. In international news, India will cast ballots in the world's biggest election day, which began Monday. India currently has 814 million eligible, eligible voters. Due to the large size of the country, India will have to cast their votes over a period of five weeks. This election will be key to the family dynasty that has ruled for, mo for most India's post-independence history. The two parties that will be close Closest in running for office is Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi. As of now, Modi is the biggest threat to the now governing Congress party. Gandhi has been portrayed as a youthful leader that can revamp India's faltering economy, but many see him as privileged and not acquainted with everyday Indian life. For today's weather from the Weather Channel, the high is 72 degrees with winds blowing northwest at 20 miles per hour. Today's broadcast was produced by Tori O'Neill, Alexandria Rhodes, and Harley Brown. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and become a fan of Texan TV News on Facebook. I am Autumn Adams. Tune in tomorrow for the latest news from the Tarleton State Campus in Seaville, Texas.